Uh, good afternoon, everyone, in Science and Values. Uh, this is going to be the only lecture video that I make for this week regarding this week's reading. Uh, this week's reading has a lot in it. Um, a lot of it, as you'll notice, is, is very factual and historical, um, kind of surveying different examples of biohacking from around the world. Um, I'm not necessarily interested in the specifics of the examples that the author provides. I'm more interested in the moments in the article um, when he's discussing what the purpose of the biohacking movement is, or as we call it, might call it DIY bio. That's how the article refers to it. I'm more interested in the, uh, the kind of values and goals associated with biohacking as a movement itself, broadly speaking, and I'm less concerned with the specifics of the kinds of examples that he provides. So I'm not going to be discussing the reading itself in detail, though I will allude to it at times. I just want to kind of talk generally about what I want you to get out of this article um, and what I want to kind of think about um, as it relates to the broader um, you know, uh, narrative of the class that I am uh, discussing. So, as you recall, we spent several weeks discussing what is science. Um, then we turned to Faya Abend and we discussed the question, why science? Why is scientific authority justified? In other words, is the question. And Faya Abend, uh, by the end of the last week's readings, um, we discussed the, the uneasy fit between um, science and democracy. And as I see it, this week's reading is a natural transition from the end of that discussion. Uh, what I discussed there in relation to Faya Abin's discussion of science and democracy is the idea that, that maybe we can reconceive of scientists as educators as opposed to experts whose role in society is more to help the public understand science uh, rather than simply uh, kind of acting as an authority who just tells somebody what the information is. Uh, and so in that way, we might find a, a closer fit between science and democracy. But some other things that come up, even though this is not mentioned by Feyerabend, um, although he does hint at having citizens participate in the process of science itself, having what he refers to as laymen uh, participate in the actual uh, processes of science. Um, and some contemporary examples of that is, you know, we can refer to as citizen science, where citizens are actually empowered themselves to engage in science. Um, and, and this is, you know, this is often um, something that you can imagine happening maybe at the grade school level where um, children are engaging in science and learning how to do science at a very young age. You could also imagine different symposia or forums where scientists invite members of the community in to learn about science because they are curious about it. And all of that, you know, is, is kind of evidence of trying to make science more democratic. But what we get at in this reading is this more, of what I would suggest somewhat radical in comparison to something like citizen science is something referred to as biohacking. Now, for the purposes of the class, I think, you know, biohacking can refer to a specific activity itself or a specific experiment, such as an individual, you know, uh, extracting their DNA and, and, and doing tests on it, you know, and they're in their homes or in their garage. Um, so there is the specific kinds of activities that biohacking could be where you actually are editing your own DNA using at-home kits or something like that. Biohacking, I think, can also just refer to a broader movement um, itself that can be thought it doesn't refer to one thing but it is a broader movement that is kind of railing against the notion that scientific knowledge uh, belongs to any one particular individual um, in the article the author consistently uh, refers to um, the problem with what he refers to as big bio 
And, uh, this, you know, this is often, you hear this same terminology used in relationship to big pharma or big ag. I think it's, this is just kind of the same idea is that uh, big bio refers to uh, something like science, uh, science being conducted largely within universities and largely within uh, private uh, corporations, and that somehow these kinds of big institutions like universities and corporation are the domain where real science is done. Um, and so really part of the biohacking movement is a kind of critique of this way of thinking about um, who and what scientific knowledge belongs to. Um, it really calls into question, going back, it really calls into question what science is and who the scientist is and who a scientist can be. It's trying to um, disrupt, in a way, our ordinary modes of thinking about who does science and what um, and who or what scientific knowledge belongs to. Um, one of their, you know, biggest, I think, qualms within biohacking is a critique of something like the patent system and something like intellectual property rights. The idea that this kind of thing only belongs to experts or those with PhDs um, and that, um, you know, it really that's what the realm of science is. That's who the realm of science belongs to. And for the average citizen, um, they don't really have a place in the production of scientific knowledge. Biohacking wants to kind of take as its starting point that that is a, that is a false um, way of thinking about what science is. And I want to kind of interpret this and say, in particular, this is simply um, another instance of what I think can be referred to as the democratization of knowledge. The idea that given the uh, scientific and technological age that we live in with things like social media um, and the ability to share information so quickly and have access to information so quickly, uh, biohacking is simply a, another manifestation of that. And it's, it's somewhat unsurprising um, that within that, it's somewhat unsurprising that, that individuals would be uncomfortable with the idea that knowledge belongs only to experts um, and that science is only done by experts. Um, this kind of movement, I, I suggest, given the world we live in in the 21st century, is somewhat inevitable. Um, and so, and so uh, I guess I want to suggest biohacking as a movement was inevitable when will continue to only grow in its influence. Um, and also that, um, that biohacking itself uh, it has a legitimate place uh, within um, society. It has a legitimate uh, way and place to critique um, what's referred to as quote unquote big bio. What it does is it gives us a different model for thinking about, um, it gives us more of a horizontal as opposed to vertical power structure. And democracy is much more horizontal where things are shared between people. So information is disseminated between individuals. Information is not disseminated from the expert down to the novice. Rather, information is just available to everyone who wants it. Now, undoubtedly, you saw that. Uh, and so, so again, I, I think there's two senses in which I can refer. There's biohacking the movement itself, which is kind of a name given to this broad name of a movement that is railing against this notion of science as belonging to institutions and universities. There's also the specifics of biohacking where it refers to the specific techniques you can engage in. And of course, within you know the, the video that I have you watch this week from this individual, Josiah Zinger, um, we see some of the dangers, of course, associated with 
uh, specific instances of biohacking, um, taking the methods and the tools um, that experts might, we might claim that experts and individuals, taking, sorry, taking the tools and methods of experts who we might reasonably can claim are the only ones who know how to engage in these tools and these methods and using them on yourself. Um, taking, making very questionable and ethical, questionable and potentially unethical uh, decisions as it relates to um, like things like editing your own genes or extracting your own DNA and conducting ex experiments at home. Someone might reasonably say that this is why we do leave it up to experts. But nonetheless, that on its own, I don't think is enough of a reason to say that biohacking ought to be dismissed as just some, you know, crazy hippies in their garage kind of messing around. Um, there may be some individuals that give it that face and give it that name, but that is, I think, um, unfair to what biohacking is within the, I guess what I want to say, within the spirit of this kind of critique of power structures and the, a critique of who owns knowledge, um, that that kind of critique has a very legitimate place to play um, alongside other kinds of, you know, political movements themselves in the kind of world that we live in right now. And so I guess one thing we might ask from the biohacking perspective is what is wrong with making information um, and methods accessible and available to everyone? What is wrong with open access and open source software that can be downloaded by anyone anywhere um, such that they can learn how to use it themselves? What, what is wrong with that? Um, and I think... Again, we might point to examples of people using it unsafely, but again, the examples of, of, of a few potentially unsafe practices does not itself, uh, is not enough to diminish or dismiss the entire movement. Um, what is wrong with taking um, power out of the hands of universities and corporations and giving it to um, everyone else? Because... Um, the, the idea that, that knowledge just belongs to universities and knowledge belongs to corporations, the notion of intellectual property rights, again, there, this is, these are some power, very powerful systems to be moving against. Um, no doubt, these individuals in these positions of power, there's a lot to be lost if this system is upset. Um, but that doesn't mean that the attempt at the democratization of knowledge itself, simply because you're you know, you're going to upset the status quo and you're going to make people uncomfortable, again, is obviously not itself enough reason to kind of say, you know, we should just, you know, stop stop doing it. You know, that, that would be a, a kind of um, cynical response to any kind of protest. So yes, there are plenty of individuals that, meant, that benefit from the status quo. There's a lot of money to be made off of patents and intellectual property rights. Um, there's a lot of... Um, power to be maintained if we accept the idea that to be a scientist is to have a degree, it's to have a PhD, and to practice science is to um, be able to own the knowledge that you produce and to have a patent on it, and that's what it means. But again, um, there is a lot to be lost. Um, lots of individuals, powerful individuals, benefit from the way that things currently are, but again, from the biohacker's perspective, um, it doesn't need to be that way. Um, it doesn't have to be that way simply because that's the way that it has always been. This is what protests and movements are all about. It is, it is challenging some of the primary intuitions surrounding um, the status quo as it relates to science and what science is as an institution. If we can redefine the idea that science doesn't belong in universities and academic institutions, but that science actually belongs to everyone. What a dramatic paradigm shift we could achieve. At least I think that's what the biohackers would say. And so um, I just want to refer to a quote here on page 172 from the reading. And of course, the, the title of this section is, you do not need a PhD uh, to do biology. Um, 
So let me just read. Through making biology hackable in these different ways, garage biology is producing a picture of different ways of conducting research in the life sciences, more and open, more open and horizontal within a mixed constellation of different actors, such as startups, universities, individuals, community spaces, and with a prominence of small and open companies instead of big bio slow giants. So the whole, all of these virtues associated with something like this, openness, horizontality, um, different spaces for practicing science. Again, this, this, this movement is still somewhat nascent and somewhat new, I think. And, and, and according to the article, it hasn't achieved that much. Um, in this, again, this article is a bit dated. This article was eight years old, and so some of you may know better than I do. But fundamentally, biohacking is asking us to reimagine what it is we mean when we say that we are engaged in doing science in two ways. It, it asks us to imagine reimagine what it means to what it it's asking us in two ways what it means um, to do science one is who does science is it only people with phds and two um where is it done so who is doing it and where is it done i think those are the two different um questions that are being asked by biohackers so that again that's really all i have to say about this um uh, as you'll see this week's reading is it, it reveals that biohacking is not one thing. Biohacking has is is a name of a larger movement, and um, it's it's disparate right now, which is to say, it's not some organized you know thing. There's not a, a biohacking headquarters where you can find specific information um, about what biohacking is. It refers to something rather specific, or it, excuse me, it refers to something rather broad, but. Any instance of biohacking that you can locate, um, not only here but globally, um, shares some common features. It is a critique of expertise, it is an attempt to make science more democratic, and it is to call into question who a scientist can be and where science can be practiced. And it is also um, a critique of the notions that go along with the idea of science as, science as an expert, and that is a critique in particular of, um, of, of the power structures, that the idea that, that science is top-down, it wants to make access to information more horizontal as opposed to vertical, and what goes along with that is, is getting rid of something, maybe not getting rid of, but at least challenging the idea of the patent system and the idea of intellectual property rights. Right? And so that's really all I have for this. Um, there's nothing, I don't want to say too much more now. We're going to have more to say about it on Friday during the Zoom meeting. But um, uh, I hope this was helpful in at least clarify, clarifying for you uh, some of what was going on with, with what biohacking is.